hello. Good evening, everyone. I, this is Sean. My name is Sean Chia from the Malaysian International Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Uh, this is our first time that we are having our webinar later in the evening. Uh, normally, we do it every Thursday about uh, 1 p.m. Uh, so welcome, everyone. Um, this tonight's topic revolves around advertising and marketing, uh, especially in this uh, COVID or pandemic times. Uh, you, this is the time where uh, businesses should be shouting out to say that, hey, I survived, I'm still here, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, still servicing you, my products are back in the market. So it's time for you to be shouting about your, your, your ability to have uh, undergone this severe test. Um, uh, you need to be very positive about where things are now. I mean, there's a lot of uh, bad or negative news in, in the market about how things are bad and, and uh, uh, businesses are really suffering. But uh, try not to be too negative because then you will succumb to something we call the theory of truism. Let, let me give you an example of what uh, theory of truism is, right? Okay, so um, you, you have this uh, uh, hawker Chan, you know, who, who does his uh, chicken rice, okay? And uh, the son, uh, he, he saved a lot of money, sent the son over to Harvard and he got his MBA and uh, uh, marketing. And he says, dad, you know, you, 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 should, you should advertise, you know, you, you should put up a big banner outside the shop to say that, you know, best chicken rice in, in town, you know? So um, the father say, okay, it's going to cost me a bomb, but I'm going to do it. So he, he puts up the sign outside the shop. And uh, soon enough, you know, people notice him, they stop by and his, his business went booming and, and, and he, he made a lot of money. And then the, he tells people, look, you know, it's, it's very, very good uh, worth uh, the, the, the fees that I pay him to go to Harvard and uh, get his MBA. And uh, look, you know, he's right. You know, he says, put up a sign and uh, business will good. This is my son, you know, very good. Then sooner or later, um, time comes... Uh, almost a recession and the son says hey dad you know like uh, recessions recessions is coming you know um i think you better save some costs uh, uh, maybe you know take down the sign that you put out there it's gonna it's costing you money so the father then in attempt to save costs uh, took down the sign and sure enough uh, people stopped coming because they don't see him they thought that he has already gone or, or, or moved on or something like that and sure enough his business just slide and then he, he, he says, oh, see, there you are. My, my son is very good. You know, he predicted the recession and the recession did come. And look, I lost my business. So this is the theory of tourism. So for uh, SMEs out there and all those of you who are watching this, you know, you shouldn't be spreading negativity. Just be positive. And one of the things of doing that is now is very crucial that you should start to advertise to push out your brand, basically just to shout out positively that you are still there, right? Okay, let's, uh, before I, I pass you on to our esteemed panelists who are very experienced in the uh, marketing and branding industry, uh, let me introduce you to uh, the Malaysian International Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Uh, we are one of the oldest chambers in Malaysia. Uh, we, we were founded in 1837, 137 years old, uh, but we are still there. We have more than a thousand members, uh, largely international companies, and uh, we have an ecosystem of more than 21,000 uh, um, uh, followers. All right. Uh, and without further ado, let me introduce you to today's topic, which is advertising and marketing for, well, it's not really only about startup. I would say startup, yes, startup for the, the uh, surviving the MCO, right? Okay, so we have the first panelist. Uh, his name is Mr. Neeraj Chabra. And uh, he has been in the uh, media and entertainment industry since 2009, uh, serving Star Media Group. Um, TGV Cinemas, um, very good track record, uh, worked with uh, Group M, Harvest, IPG Media, um, various car brands, Telco, FMCG, etc. And uh, some of the uh, feather in the cap is that he has worked with teams that has won the Malaysian Media Awards, such as the uh, uh, 
the, the, the Kanchu Awards. So um, he's going to give you a snapshot of why you should be advertising uh, in this MCO period. Um, can I introduce you to Niraj? Are you ready? Hi, Sean. Good evening. I'm ready. Thank you so much for having us. Okay. Over to you, Niraj. Okay. So now uh, I'm going to be sharing a bit about why advertising is important. So the first thing I wanted to highlight was that advertising is most important right now to generate revenue uh, and advertising gets the message out there for you to not just replenish the current income you've lost from regular customers but also to attract new customers okay advertising is the one of the most crucial ways that you can get ahead get noticed and get that business back in so that's the crux of the matter on why to me advertising is very important now uh, i won't take up too much of your time so i'm just going to move on to the next slide which is why advertise now especially during covid so uh, one of the things that advertisers make the mistake of doing is to hold on to their expenditure because they want to uh, keep it keep their reserves for uh, to maintain their overheads, staff salaries, and things like that. And, and I completely agree. You know, you need uh, everything that you have right now to maintain your sustain, uh, sustainability. But I think people overlook the fact that if you don't advertise right now, you may not have a business in the future to shout about anymore. So uh, one of the reasons why you should advertise now, uh, I've actually made it very simple and straightforward, is number one, the rates are at the lowest. Uh, media owners are able to provide the best discounts currently. Okay. Uh, number two, there's no clutter. Normally, there will be a lot of advertisers and uh, currently, like I said, everyone is holding back on their resources. So there's not many ads out there. So it's actually a good time to be seen, to be heard, to be noticed, especially for the smaller brands. You know, uh, most of the advertisements are always dominated by fast food chains, uh, McDonald's and everything. Uh, currently, uh, I think one of the uh, most prominent ads I see today uh, everywhere is Lala Move. So it's a good time to be noticed, you know? And if you don't, like I mentioned earlier, if you don't find new business now, you may not be around later. You may not survive the current uh, pandemic and crisis in order to sustain yourself. So uh, one of the uh, benefits of actually advertising now is also that people are really sick and tired of getting bad news. Every day they wake up, COVID this, COVID that, this many people have died. Uh, it's always turmoil. So when you advertise, people are actually looking forward to something cheerful, some positive news in any way. And uh, advertisers are very creative these days. Some of the most creative ads I've seen, I've actually put a smile on my face, especially during this MCO when all of us are stuck at home uh, and uh, where the only thing you can do is stare at the four walls, depending on how big your house is. So I wanted to quote a uh, personal experience uh, like you mentioned about the Hawker Chan earlier. Uh, in my own neighborhood, we have a WhatsApp group. And uh, one of the residents staying in my neighborhood is actually a MMA gym owner. And for the last three and a half months, uh, his gym has been closed, obviously, to maintain the SOPs. So he has not had any income to sustain himself or his family. So this gentleman uh, started to advertise on our WhatsApp residential group about his family's secret ayam pache recipe. Getting back to your example about Hokka Chan. So uh, believe it or not, uh, I mean, a lot of us are struggling at this point of time and uh, cutting down our expenses is at the top of the priority. You know, no more eating outside, no more expensive restaurants and things and uh, even limiting takeaways. So, but people were willing to support and help him and uh, his family recipe, uh, his uh, grandmother started cooking ayam pache since the 1950s and the recipe was passed down and this gentleman, because he runs his own gym, was only able to cook uh, for family events and uh, special occasions like Hari Raya, 
uh, Idol Fitri, Hari Raya Haji and all. But currently he's made that into his full-time business and he's able to sustain his family because of that. And the reason everybody knows this is because he has gone viral. He posted it on Facebook, Instagram, and on the WhatsApp family group, uh, our residential group. And now everybody is buying his ayam pache. So this is a, a simple example of why advertising is important, no matter how small it may be. Putting up all these Instagram images, Facebook, and uh, setting out WhatsApp and everything did not cost him any money. But look at the returns. He's able to sustain his family over the last uh, couple of months. And um, the other best example I can highlight is uh, McDonald's. You know, everybody knows McDonald's. Everybody has been buying McDonald's for the longest time. And uh, that's one of the top of the mind recall for fast food. If you ever want to get a late night snack or an easy snack. Now, McDonald's doesn't need to advertise. But the strong reason or the main reason that they do is because when you're young and you're growing up, you know, McDonald's is a luxury. McDonald's is a, it's, it's fun. It's fast. It's cool. It's hip. But over the years, uh, like personally for me, uh, I think I've only taken fast food like maybe twice this year. So as you mature, as you grow up, your priorities, your taste buds, everything evolve and change. So McDonald's needs to advertise to lose, to, to replenish the customers that they've lost over the years, like me, who have changed our palate. Which is why until today, McDonald's still advertises and they're very smart to advertise at uh, 10 o'clock, 10 a.m. in the morning for lunch uh, to put subliminal messages to tell you to think about them for lunch instead of going anywhere else to any of the other restaurants or even their competitors. So uh, advertising works and it's more important to advertise now because it also will help in stimulating the economy. Money needs to go around, you know? So you need to help do your part, whatever you can, as small as possible to help stimulate the economy, buy local, advertise local, do everything that you can. And uh, let's, let's, you know, uh, help the economy. Let's help Malaysia survive this pandemic. Now, um, my last slide will actually be sharing. Now, these are some statistics. Uh, according to experts in the media and advertising industry, uh, that you should never stop advertising. And if you have to, you're going through major restructuring. Uh, COVID-19 is actually a good, good excuse, but you shouldn't stop for more than six months. But if you stop completely, you may not be around in the future to even have a business. So uh, the other thing I wanted to highlight was also... Um, recently, there's been a lot of talk on whether now is a good time to advertise. And just a couple of days ago, the Asian Media Leader Summit was held, which was moderated by Mr. Sam Tak Chun, who is the former Malaysian Digital Association uh, president, former president. And uh, he had a panel of a lot of international speakers. And uh, the takeaway from that, the message was, that advertising is crucial and encouraged, and also that brands need to evolve or risk losing out. So like I mentioned earlier, it doesn't matter how you advertise. It can be as small as a WhatsApp group that goes around. You can post it on your Instagram, but please get the message out there. And now's the best time. People need good news. They need to see funny, cheerful things, and you're actually contributing to uh, positive news. So, um, Okay, just to wrap up, um, we'll be actually having an event on the 12th and 13th of August at uh, Wisma Madrid, where we'll actually share in detail about the uh, packages that we have and uh, also share with you on the, I, I'm here to talk about uh, whether to advertise now and uh, the other panel speaker, Mr. Andrew, will be talking about how to advertise. So. That's all from me. Um, do you have any questions for me, Sean? Oh, okay. Thank you, um, Niraj. Yeah, you're right. Uh, businesses shouldn't leave it for too long. Um, I, I've known uh, a, a good friend and their business, you know, um, 
there are some difficulties with SOPs and stuff like that. Then they they open and then they shut for a few more weeks. Then they are back back again and then they're off again. And uh, it it really it really disrupts uh, the the flow because then customers would, would be thinking, um, are you open? Are you not? Are you still there? You know, then they will they will they will seek other uh, alternatives. So it is quite essential. I agree with you, uh, Niraj, that uh, you have to keep that momentum going. That uh, you are still there. Uh, yes, maybe I'm 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 shut for a while, but I need to communicate to say that yeah, okay, just just have a bit of patience. I'll be there. I'll be there. Uh, it, it's just the customer engagement that needs to be continued. Uh, how, however big, however small, as simple as just a WhatsApp group, like you, what you say. Yeah, I totally agree with you. All right. Um, okay, so we are going to do the next guest speaker, and um, he's Mr. Andrew Lim, um, commonly known as the agency guy. Uh, he's a banking industry, but uh, has been in the advertising industry since uh, 2006. Okay, uh, here's what his 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 um, profile says: He's good at identifying opportunities to fill the gap between global ad agencies. Yes, global ad agencies might tend to be a bit uh, scary for SMEs, but it's not very scary because you have uh, someone like uh, Andrew is going to show you uh, some of the tips and tricks of uh, uh, advertising for SMEs. Uh, very lean team. His uh, agency, he calls it the 360, a full 360 ad agency services at affordable rates. All right. So they, they do the whole lot, uh, creative and video production, photo shoots, the media buy, the works, e-commerce, social media, et cetera, et cetera. He has worked with uh, brands like Nokia, Sanyong, um, Chevrolet, Chili's, and et cetera, et cetera, all, all sorts of stuff. Okay. A very keen scuba diver too. All right. So without further ado, um, let me introduce you to Andrew. He's going to give you some quick tips and little things that you can do for your branding and marketing. Um, Andrew, are you ready? Yeah. Hi, Sean. Good evening. Yes, I'm ready here. Okay, the floor is yours. Thanks, John. Hi, good evening, everybody. Uh, on behalf of the uh, AdConnect team, I'd like to thank uh, Sean and your team in MICCI for having us this evening, uh, Sean. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Also, earlier, my colleague uh, Niraj uh, has shared why is it important to advertise during this uh, COVID-19 period. So my, my point now is to tell you how to do it, all right? uh, especially targeting SMEs uh, out there that uh, I can show you uh, it can be easily done with the right, right uh, people giving you the right points and uh, you know, uh, the right uh, ideas to do it. All right? So basically, I'm going to give you an overview. Uh, of course, we can't do this uh, long, any longer. So you get an idea of uh, in case you have a brand, you have a product and services and uh, how to advertise it during this period, uh, I will show you uh, here. Okay, uh, basically we like to always start with a brand, uh, which is very important. Uh, if you see everywhere here, a uh, brand is a primarily the identity of each and every company, all right? So you have a logo, you know, you have a brand. If you haven't trademarked, I suggest you do it so. Uh, this afternoon, I had a lunch uh, somewhere in Taman Wayu, and the restaurant is called E&O Kari Kepala Ikan. I'm not sure whether you heard it before. The E&O logo is the E&O hotel logo. So you see, so they creatively designed the E&O exact phone into a curry kapala ikan, then we, we ask them whether it's related. So you see, you got to trademark your logo, otherwise people are going to copy. All right, and the other thing is very important is that your brand actually reflect all your communication, whether it's your website, the social media, you know. So all this has to be very consistent. So for example, you see logos that I've shown here, they have become a household name. So uh, I'm actually an advocate of uh, Made in Malaysia product 
and I believe SME as an overall, the product and services are actually on par with, uh, with a lot of uh, overseas product, even better. What I feel that's lacking uh, in, in the SMEs here is the, you know, the branding side, the, you know, the, the creative side, the, you know, the, I will show you where that uh, we can help improve so we can actually elevate your SME, you know, brands and product services to a level that, you know, uh, like these logos that I've shown here, become household name one day, right, Sean? Okay, good. Okay, so basically, uh, if you are designing your, your logo, it's very important uh, that, uh, yeah, important that you have a color palette, right? So you see here, uh, it embodies the creative presentation of your brand, right? They are very important as uh, they tap to emotional, to us, it's emotional marketing tactics. If you do it right, you attract, you not just attract them, but you actually retain and convert them. So every day I drove past a digital signage nowadays, a digital billboard. I saw a green color. In, instantly, I realized, oh, that's grab. That's grab. Grab fruit is advertising. So the green color resonates in my brain. It really captures, even though I didn't look at it, but I saw a green is grab. Then if I drive past another area that's red as Asia, X, big, big X, that is one time they were advertising. I think I agree, you agree with me now, Orange like Lalamu has been very active. I think Niraj, my colleague, has mentioned. So you see, logo and color palette is very important when you create your logo, your brand. So to make it able to identify by your customers, retain them, convert them to your, your, your products and services. So basically, these are the step two. If you are designing your logo, first, you need to trademark it, you know, make it nice. Secondly, you make sure the colors are distinct to you and your brand, right? So the next thing and most important of all, your communications, right? If you have a product or services, a lot of SME, I've noticed, I've been to a lot of fair, a lot of uh, uh, spares that they, they, this SME would have booth. They would like to present their products and services, hopefully, you know, the international, uh, uh, you know, uh, participants were able to connect with them. But uh, most of the time, unfortunately, I see they are very lacking in areas like their communications, like their catalog, their brochure, their flyers, their logo designs, you know. So here you can see, basically, graphics are, are, are important for all your types of communication. So uh, it can be used during your digital channel, you know, your print, you know. So it's important that uh, you have a good artwork, right? A set of good artworks that you can elevate your brand, give perception and confidence to your customers. If you can see my sample here, the good design versus a not so good design. And uh, the not so good is very cluttered. You can see that you don't want to put all things about some customers who say, Andrew, I, uh, I'm paying for the ad. You know, I myself put all detail. So we believe less is more sometimes in terms of how you do it, in terms of doing creatively graphics. So you want to create the, emo the emotion, the curiosity, you know, then you let people to come. You don't want to put all that and so cluttered and, and the one people don't want, to, don't want to feel exciting, you know, the colors and everything and too much text. So they're not excited. So how you do it is to keep it simple, keep it uh, less is more, right? That is always our our key point here. Right, so, uh, well, I I heard that my colleague and even uh, Sean mentioned earlier, uh, today market is all about digital, digital marketing. So if you're creating a brand and logo, uh, whether it's e-commerce, Facebook or social media, the logo would need to be featured consistently, you know, to reflect your branding, right? So whether it's in terms of direction, your theme, your tone has to be consistent. So uh, SME, alike all, uh, I realized that there's a lot of areas to be improved. You know, Sean, they can actually do similarly to brands like that. And one day they can have their own corporate identity, you know, we give them a bit more confident, you know, so they are a bit more consistent. So this is how you do it, all right, to manage your brand, you know, your identity, all right? So it's consistent throughout all your platforms. Okay, and... Uh, Another area that's important, if you see here, uh, is packaging. I realized uh, and also noticed SME uh, has a lot of a section of people who actually produce products. Uh, so if you notice that uh, if you have a physical product, 
it's a very critical part of your branding. Very important to me, all right? Because if you leave it on the shelf, first impression is the most important one, all right? We have a, actually the stats will tell you, one third of customers, they will tell you that they will make the purchase decision based on the packaging itself. I remember uh, I want to buy a, I want to buy a conflicts, right? And I went to the conflicts there, and the packaging design, the color, the vibrant actually attracted me. Not so much of the price first. So so I went there. It was it was a nicely done. It was the creative packaging was very good. And on top of that, it gave you free Tupperware. You know, so things like that. Packaging helps you to move your product. So uh, uh, it's also a very tangible way you know, to let your customers to interact with your brand. It is important that you should reflect your branding in terms of colors, you know, design. So you see here, like, design like for M&M, they're very consistent. Their brand and logo is featured very prominently on their packaging. Once you see, it's M&M. &M, so it's very clear, crystal, you know, you can see clearly and you know that's branding and they're very nicely done. You know, compared to you see a, a packaging on my right, and it's honey and, and you don't know whether it's honey from B or honey from what and, and it's just one tone. Yeah, you should spend a little bit more. It doesn't not going to cost you a lot, right? So it can be done easily. Okay. So basically, I want to share that marketing, uh, advertising is not a one-time project. It has to be a continuing thing to make yourself a successful team. All right. So uh, I like to continue. Why some advertising and some brands fail? This is very important. Yeah, number one, they don't have a long-term vision, right? You need to stick with it. You know, you have to wait for it. You have to toil on it. Secondly, uh, your message are not strong, right? And, and thirdly, your, your creative is very inconsistent. Kejap, you use this color, the next time you use a different color. So it's very confusing, all right? And you do not know your uh, ideal customer, your demographic, so it's very important. All right, so basically you need to focus on your vision. Okay, so uh, I'd like to wrap this up by uh, two key takes away about advertising, how you do it. First, uh, very important, you need to know and understand your customer, all right, where they're coming from and, who, and what are their purchasing power. Secondly, your brand, what are they stand for? What is your story behind it? Like my earlier, my, my colleague said that the I am purchasing, you know, so you got to build this and you can have your marketing get it right. Okay, so uh, basically, I want you guys to come to our event and we'll tell you more and hold your hand and share that you can actually do this in a very, very good time to advertise, uh, to actually advertise your brand. Okay, Sean, back to you. Okay, thank you, uh, Andrew. Yes, you're, you're quite right in terms of the uh, messaging in terms uh, in branding. Um, the, the important part is that uh, you, you have to find your why you know, it's, it's not about honey or you're trying to sell something. It's the why. The message is the why. Uh, for example, Air Asia has a good one. You say, now everyone can fly. So that's your why. Uh, it's like uh, Cheers. Remember Cheers? The, 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 the pub, uh, it's like where everyone knows your name. So that seems to be is your tagline. And that's where you have to create a story. And one of the things that uh, you need to do is uh, it's bike size so your messaging must be bike size but consistent so you have to create a story you know that people will follow it's no longer um i'm the cheapest in town i'm the best in town or, or things like that it has to be a why that you say um we create healthy food and then you you can have a a, a storyline that goes beyond just only once or twice okay so it it, it drags on to it's a commitment to a, a brand building in a in a fairly long run. Huh? Okay, so that's that's where I, I, I believe in, in it. Um, but um, uh, here's to uh, some questions to the panel. Um, uh, the In terms of packaging, yes, uh, we understand that uh, it has to be attractive. But um, there is, at the moment, there is a, a new movement that is, is the eco-friendly movement. So they have a lot of things like a plain packaging, uh, very rustic looking um, uh, labeling of, of products. Um, does that still work in your opinion? Any of you? Um, uh, Andrew? 
Yes, uh, I believe uh, that uh, earthy tone uh, usually reflects to healthy and organic products. I believe so, right? They are mm. because uh, the market now uh, more people are want to you know live healthy. Yeah, so hence uh, products uh, uh, which are catered to that segment would go into a very earthy tone. Uh, and also you have certain information that says that uh, this is made from recycled paper, you know, uh, and you know, products are 100% organic. So hence the, the color theme. Yeah, it, uh, but this will only cater to a certain segment of the market audience who uh, believe in healthier lifestyle. Mm. I guess so. Uh, that's, in fact, that's their why, right? Their story is eh? we are, we are eco-friendly. So that's why we will do that. Plain packaging is like, uh, means that I, I, I don't spend a lot of money on, 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 on labels and stuff like that. So the, the cost reduction is passed on to the consumer. So that, that is actually the why, right? The story. Okay. Right. Uh, there's a, something else about now the hottest trend, like you, I mentioned it earlier and then you glazed over it is about the social media. Now it's about social media. Uh, a lot of the, the SMEs are wanting to get onto the social media platform. All right. Uh, because um, it, it, it's low cost and it appears to be easily, you know, a shotgun method to be able to attract a larger crowd. So what, what are your views on it? Uh, any of you? Uh, Niraj, uh, Andrew? Uh, yeah, Sean, I would like to take that question. Actually, it depends on your product primarily. Um, for example, if you're a roofing specialist and you want to showcase your roofing products, how your team goes about renovating a roof, for example, I know that social media is a big buzz and all, but you also need to be sure that you choose your platform wisely. Um, I don't want to mention names, but let's say you shoot a one minute video and, and showcase it on a, on a fun platform. Uh, I'm sure you can figure out what I'm talking about. I don't think you will get the social traction you need, you know, because people go to these platforms. They're not looking for, for business or they're looking for fun videos to look at something to kill the time. So uh, although social media and digital marketing is, is growing, you know, our Malaysian ADEX has shown that uh, it will, it has last year itself, actually it has overtaken uh, traditional media in terms of uh, radio, TV and print, sorry it has overtaken uh, TV and print and it will continue to grow at a, at a exponential rate, you know? So getting the right media platform to advertise is very important. Mm. I'd like to add yeah, to that. Okay. Uh, social media, yes, is a low cost entry, but importantly that uh, very important to all SME who want to have their own social media pages is the, the content, Sean. So what you write, what you showcase, the visual is very important. That's how you engage with your audience. So, uh, and if you do not get it right, uh, if you don't do it right, you get, get banned by the, the social media uh, pages. So there are limitations there. So uh, yeah, so as I said, content is very important, what you write and what you showcase. Uh, one experience I had is that, uh, uh, you know, they, they are a manufacturer, then they show pictures of their factory, uh, the production, but all was in a mess, you know, messy carton boxes everywhere and they just publish it. Yeah, so I don't think that's 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 very attractive, yeah. right? So that's not a really right way to actually promote your services in, in that sense. So importantly, you have, because everything's digital, it's online, so people see needs to be good, uh, read needs to be right. Yeah, that's right. about it. Okay, I, I guess you're right. Uh, from the uh, Niraj, your, your opinion is yes, uh, you can use social media. Uh, social media will give you the eyeballs, but whether it's the right eyeballs that you're looking at, right? I mean, it could be other people, like you say, they are not really looking for a roofing person, but you know, they are looking at some funny story. You know, it, they may not be your 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 target audience. Uh, I guess uh, that's one of those um, things about social media, right? And uh, something about social media too is that. Um, a lot of people do not understand or are not aware that if you were to actively use social media, you should actually have something called um, a crisis management plan because social media can be a two-way sort, right? 
right. like the, the guy with the uh, the the bat the the the, the, uh, the messy uh, videos you will get all these brickbacks and this bad feedback and people criticizing and all the time so you have to have very strong um, uh, 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 ability to handle such uh, negativities uh, uh, all right so that's about social media that you can do right now um talk about uh, the the uh, word if you hear you forget right when you see you might remember um, when you do you will understand so in in that way uh, about your, your the, a way of marketing um, i believe the engagement media the ability to to get the audience to engage with your offering is something which is uh, doable right and any suggestions or, or comments on how you approach doing this you know um, um, niraj or, or andrew sorry could you repeat the question again sorry okay how how would you leverage on an, a customer engagement to to, en to to interact with your your media so because this comes i think more towards the social media point of view the, the digital format where you can put in little games and competition for people to interact with your brand rather than a static one where you just advertise in a newspaper and it becomes static yes I, i'll i'll answer that i'll try uh i think it's more of an engagement uh sean nowadays in social media uh, it's all about database i think uh not necessarily you need to uh, keep pushing product, promoting product. So you have to create, like, to have your page constantly visited by your audience. You have to create uh, activities such as, you know, uh, games, interactive engagement. For example, like uh, Father's Day, you know, Mother's Day, you create some activities, you know, or some CSR program to create engagement traffic, not, not a sales uh, uh, oriented kind of, uh, you know, promo product all the time push product, you know. So that's where you get that uh, the kind of uh, new engagement, you get more traffic, or oh, this product, this company is actually uh, uh, more holistic in terms of uh, as a corporate responsibility company, right? Not just a page that actually keep pushing products. So that's where you get a lot of, you want engagement activities, right? Can be yeah. done that way, John. All right. Okay, uh, I, 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 I've seen something like uh, the the newest trend now is those led advertising so it, it can be pretty um interactive because they can have uh, for example um a, a person walks past a, an led screen okay and uh, given that the, a certain time of the day the the led advertising will just flash something up and say um, take a picture of this uh, uh, um, burger and take it down the road, five, uh, five meters down the road on the right, present it within the next half an hour and you get 20% um, off your, your, your burger. So that's a very powerful interactive media that you can play with in uh, LED, don't you think so? Yes, I agree with you, Sean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh that's yeah, so a good way to actually drive traffic. Oh. Yeah, uh, we also have uh, experienced uh, uh, people converting their, their LED panels into uh, what you just mentioned, into interactive games. Yeah, for them to actually engage uh, with the brand and the product and the services. Hence, they can win uh, prizes. Yeah, mm -hmm. over, uh, yeah, they can win prizes or convert it to vouchers and, and you know, discount vouchers as well. Yeah. That's a so good you, you you reckon that's a good it's it's something which uh, most SME should look at. It depends actually on your um, cost whether you're able to do it because anytime it involves on ground engagement, the cost balloons up because of labor, manpower, traffic conditions, and you need to get a lot of uh, approvals from local governments, uh, local councils to set up these places. Uh, I recall one advertising campaign when a new coffee brand launched in Malaysia, I think about seven years ago, that uh, they did something very interactive and they did it uh, somewhere in Bukit Bintang. Uh, but the logistics to make that happen were actually, it, it cost a bomb to them. Uh, you know, uh, if you track back the history, you'll be, you'll be uh, able to identify the brand easily. 
But uh, let's just say that they, they had the coppers, they had the revenue to push the product. So it depends on you actually, uh, what your, uh, whether you're able to afford the cost. Right, right. Sometimes it's, it's, it may not be on ground. Uh, it's just a very simple, um, if, if, if uh, a particular shop is, is nearby and if there is a low traffic, then they can signal to the uh, administrator of the LED screen to just flick to say that if you come in the next half an hour, you will get 20% off or something like that, just to drive traffic, right? So it's, it's nothing more than just digital yes. software work, right? All right. right. I, think I guess so, that's the next. Uh. Yeah, I think that's on the creativity part of the marketing aspect of it, uh, to create the kind of engagement and you know the traffic. So if, uh, yeah, it can be done easily. Uh, it's not so much yeah. of a program, okay. just, just a visual. Yeah, just a visual, yeah. Right. The, right. Uh, the app, yeah, can be done. Okay, um, here, here's one the question that came in. Oh, sorry, is there anything? Uh, no, no, no. Right, he said, how can SMEs compete with all the big brands when the SME product is usually at the higher or lower, that means not the eye level at the supermarket. I mean, I, I guess this is where the issue is that they, the bigger brands have bigger budgets uh, because I know that shelf eye level shelf they pay a premium for that right so right. can you have any you know insights or idea that how a smaller brand can fight this kind of a uh, uh, um, big budget uh, competitor so to speak uh? yeah. okay uh, as i mentioned earlier in my slides number one uh your brand the design your graphics you know and your packaging has to be strong. We may not be able to compete with the uh, eye level people, but uh, you need to be able to attract whether it's above shelf or below shelf, right? So there's only way that, uh, because you can't, you don't have the, the, the ability to fight for the premium shelves. I understand to a lot of SME, but uh, one, a few other areas that we can fight besides the packaging design is also uh, create activity within uh, uh, to drive traffic to the product on the shelf. For example, you may have a social media page like a Facebook. You said, okay, uh, we are running this uh, in this hypermarket, for example, you know, uh, only today you announce it and they have to work with the hypermarket during the promotion, you know, buy two, uh, buy one, two at a price of one. So you, you're, you're using your social media platform to create the bus to go to the shelf and pick up the product because you are lower level, you people don't see your products all the time. So you need to create activity from elsewhere for them to go and grab your product on the shelf. Yeah, I guess so. Huh? It could be a little game that you put on your social media and say, because you are right down in the middle or right down at the bottom there, and nobody sees you, you say, hey, you know, uh, find us and yeah, hide and sit. Yeah. take a picture of it and then you will get a, a voucher or something like that. So it can be a little bit of a game that you can play, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, they can. They can game play. They take a. They go there and buy. Take a picture. Post in our Facebook. Then yes. they can. They can. There are chances to win award prizes or, or, or whatever you know. Yeah. Yes. One Especially way. if they take a video of uh, eye level. So hey, I go down. Ah, that's where I found it. Is it? So uh, okay, right? You know, that's uh, something which is uh, quite inter in interactive. Yeah. Okay. Right. As well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is about turning something of a disadvantage to an advantage, right? Okay, so right. this is uh, some of the things that I guess working with a, uh, a creative um, team like you guys, uh, smaller, no, no big international global brands and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you're just real hardcore down on earth and you understand how, how the SMEs, uh, the, the constraints and stuff like that. Uh, coming to that word of creativity, there's another... A uh, question here about um, uh, is loosely the term would be censorship. Okay, um, do 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 you think? I mean, uh, I used to do a lot of work in in Thailand, and uh, the Thai TV ads are absolutely hilarious. You know, um, <laughs> I don't think it will even fly here in Malaysia because everyone is sensitive. You know, if I'm said something, oh, it is against this, against that. No, you can't. 
you know, you remember years ago about um, the, the, you know, the famous Petronas thing, you know, just because it's the wrong thing, this and all this kind of stuff. Uh, um, what do you think, uh, guys? Is, is it the uh, uh, Malaysians are totally too sensitive to be able to have very creative uh, advertisements? Actually, I believe that it stems from the fact that we're a multiracial society. So the rules are there in place. So one uh, race or religion doesn't offend the other. Um, but to say that it limits our creativity, I don't think that it goes that far. But um, yeah, we don't have the free hand uh, to, for example, uh, compare brands side by side. You know, you always have to say I'm better than this, but you can't say what the other brand is. Uh, that's, that's one of the limitations that we have in terms of censorship that uh, I think that uh, maybe we could uh, improve on, but it also adds to the creativity of the Malaysians that although having all these restrictions, we're actually still able to come up with good material, you know, although having mm. uh, censorship or heavy censorship for that matter. I, I, I absolutely love, uh, you remember the DG Telecom, the yellow man, you know, that's absolutely call... hilarious. There was very, very good, you know. Yeah. I remember one, which is the Chinese New Year, the guy, the, the Feng Shui master was walking around with his compass and then he said, oh, this place is how wong, how wong, the, the, the yellow man is at the corner, you know. It's just absolutely hilarious and, and, and these are some of the fun things. Uh. Okay, I've got something here very, very, very um, uh, serious. How do you evaluate the effectiveness of this? Uh, uh, these are those new media, uh, the bloggers, the influencers, opinion leaders, right? These are the new trend of, of, of uh, you know, um, branding versus a, a static advertising about you know uh, on print media or or on the um, on screen and stuff like that you know what the two versus the traditional media and now the new one where you know is using influencer the bloggers you know to viral your stuff and, and things like that how effective yes and no uh, give us some opinion any of you yeah uh, i like to take that sean um okay i'll start with uh bloggers, KOLs, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, opinion leaders online. Uh, it's very important that uh, for any SME or any advertisers uh, to actually know where your audience are, your demographics. So uh, to, to select the bloggers or influencers, you must know who are their audiences. Are they fitting your audience? Are they matching your audience? Are they, are, are, are they the right partner to work with? That's the first thing you have to identify because uh, you don't want to work with them. Suddenly they, they turn, I mean, it, something negative that it will reflect your brand. So there is uh, a risk you have, to, you have to take note there. All right. So for example, a blogger that uh, if you're a car part, car part, you know, supplier, you know, trader, also you, and this blogger writes to the automotive people. So yes, you know, there's a correct audience. So uh, that's a perfect matching. Then then that's a correct. So you cannot be trying to sell fashion into an automotive. So picking the right uh, 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 channel is very important. And versus static. Static is, everything is usually uh, for branding awareness purposes. It doesn't interact. It doesn't communicate. It's for the mass media. It's just telling people that I'm here. If you drive past Federal Highway, you see a lot of static billboard you see the brand, I'm still here. They, so it's, it's a fixated uh, ad, uh, advertisement that is more to a web brand, brand awareness. So it's for the masses. So it's not so, it's not so uh, focused as compared to uh, what you can use in, in terms of bloggers as well as uh, influencers because they have a very uh, focused audience. So uh, it depends where, where your product is to, so to how to select which platform is right for you. Oh, I guess, yeah, I, I guess if you want to hire, it's true, it's true. If, if you're a restaurant, you will get those uh, sekala, those are the people who, who blog about food and stuff like that, right? The foodie type people. Um, yeah, in, in terms of evaluating, uh, I guess you would have to do some research to see 
who are their followers. Uh, it's quite true. Like you, 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 to be able to see how effective this person is before you hire, right? Um, what, what, how do you uh, evaluate if I were to, for example, buy media space in some media, right? Be it print or static. Um, is there a way for in your industry to 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 rank or rate the effectiveness of that advertising? Okay, uh, the the bottom question is this: I'm an SME. I I only got let's say five thousand ringgits to spend for 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 this month, and here's your five thousand. So what would you promise me? How can you you know businessmen will look at something called ROI, right? A return on investment. Um, I know for a fact that uh, in the credit card industry, um, each time they ran a campaign, uh, and it's more interactive, la, not very static, la, they, there is a, um, a confirmed statistics that they usually will get 30% uplift. I mean, there's an increase in, uh, in, in activity purchases or something at 30%. Um, so in, in, in your opinion, if you are recommending certain, certain media buys, um, mm. how, how would you give the uh, return or some gauge to your, your client to say, I'm, I'm spending so much money with you, so what do I get? Normally, it depends on, first of all, you need to, like uh, Andrew mentioned earlier, you need to identify your right target audience. So based on that, uh, the money that you've given will be used to advertise on platforms or channels that relate to your uh, targeted audience. And uh, based on that, you can do a simple uh, study or survey. You can either do it yourself or speak to the media agencies or to find out that among, let's say there's three newspapers, which is the best one that fits. Uh, most of this information, to be honest, is very readily available online if you do not have a media tree, like a media agency to do it for you. So uh, as an SMI, SME, it's just a matter of actually being uh, proactive in order to get all the necessary information that you need, you know, uh, and work together with the agencies, media, whether it's a media agency or creative agency. Uh, the second part of it is content is king. You know, so if your content is able to speak, to reach out to these people, you will automatically see the returns. Um, nobody can actually guarantee any kind of ROI. So best estimates, they will tell you like your business uh, may get about 20% or 30% increment. And uh, I think that to be fair is depend on which channels you advertise and who you're speaking to la, mainly. Mm. Sean, on your 5,000 ringgit, right? So uh, I would I would I would say that uh, it's important that even before you spend on five thousand or even ten ringgit, you must have your your product ready, right? You must understand uh, where your audience. So whether it's one thousand or five thousand or ten thousand, then you can know where to spend effectively to have a higher ROI. So mm -hmm. uh, working with a, a right marketing agency will able to help the SME to be more focused on their expenditure. So to stretch their dollar, like, to say, in terms of uh, having a, a higher ROI, right? All right. Um, there's a question that came in um, quite, quite right. They're saying to do, to do with uh, the, the, the so-called sensitivities and the, the, the censorship. Uh, um, I am aware that there is some guidelines in terms of uh, advertising, right? Um, that is the black and white. I think there's also another, mm, not black and white, there's another part where uh, the audience might, there's some uh, persons who, who has very low tolerance or highly sensitive, uh, 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 more, more um, trying to, make a mountain of a molehill for their own purposes. Lah. So as an advice to SMEs who, who, who is out trying to get their brand across in all manner, um, any, any guidelines to, to, to prevent, I mean, first of all, is the, 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 the law and the, the, the black and white ones. And then any 
hints on um, um, guiding SMEs not to strain to sensitive parts. Uh. Yes, Sean. Uh, the correct term is to don't jump into the boat for all SME if you think that uh, uh, somebody is doing well and you jump in. Like for example, YouTubers, sometimes it's also all, all very individual. Uh, so very careful uh, to select again, you know, the, 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 the platform or the people you are engaging. So there's always a risk if you're putting your brand there, if uh, you might turn the other way around, you know, Sean. So uh, the guy, the guy, the, the the tip here is to, as I said, you mentioned earlier, to research a little bit. Uh, don't rush into it. I uh, don't get as many facts as possible uh, uh, to minimize, uh, uh, you know, the things that can go wrong. Because that's once you go wrong on 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 a brand, it's very hard to come back because the damage has been done. There's more costly to to rebuild the image. Yeah. I guess so. Lah. Um, that's why some media agencies uh, uh, tend to be overly conservative uh, because they are, they are afraid that their name is also damaged by something which is quite, I don't know, out of the blue, someone don't like your orange color and then you make a, a fuss out of orange, you know, or saying something like, uh, the, the COVID-19 virus is orange color. Why are you promoting orange? Are you trying to bring back the second wave? You know, there are silly fellows uh, who, who does that. Uh, okay. uh, I, I guess um, very innovative and creative uh, agencies uh, could easily turn around negative comments like that into, into an advantage. Uh, yeah, there's some very clever things that can be done, uh, right? Okay. Um, what you mentioned earlier is absolutely right. You need to have a good crisis management team mm. uh, if you're going to advertise on social media in case something goes wrong like this. Mm. All right, there's another one more. It's just uh, about a YouTuber fighting another YouTuber. Um, I think it's something to do with um, a YouTuber saying, Wow, this uh, particular nasi lemak is uh, best in the world and stuff like that. And then another YouTuber may find offense to it and say, Oh, I went there. It was one of the, the lousiest one that I ever tasted, you know, and stuff like that. So then it's, again, it is crisis management, uh, right? Uh, I guess there's also a technique to it that um, what, what does it mean by this is the best tasting fried chicken in the world, you see, it comes to be my opinion, whether you trust my opinion, all right, right, okay, you, it may not be best chicken to you, but it could be to mine, you know, so I guess um, this uh, there's nothing wrong with it, like. you can't sue me for it, like, right, okay, yeah, unless I am a, um, a, a professor of fried chicken or something like that, then my credentials are called into question, like. okay, is that right, uh, guys? Uh? Yeah, correct, Sean, uh, mm. In the digital world, we can't we can't control what people will say in the digital world. So uh, mm. a point to SME: if you are advertising in the digital world, you have to take a pinch of the salt that certain percentage of this you will you will get you will get from the from the you know the keyboard warriors if you like to say that the opinionated yeah. you know uh, yeah on true true yeah yeah. So that's that's the pros and cons la, of uh, going into the digital media. Okay. Right. And again, uh, the little tip was that you, you have to have a crisis management uh, plan in place la, because you, you get these little silly people who purposely do that just to bring uh, fame to themselves. La, all right. But okay. So questions. just to add on to your point, uh, let's say one YouTuber is condemning the other is saying that your selection or choice of fried chicken is not as good and all, right? But if you think about it, the main focus, which is the, the fried chicken of YouTuber A, is actually getting a lot of traction. And people might actually go to that stall just to check it out to go like, oh, actually, yeah, I think A is, A is right. It's good. And some might say, yeah, la, it's lousy. But the fact is, uh, I, I don't believe that there's anything, there's such thing as bad advertising. It's just, to me, it's all about crisis management. The more people talk about your product, whether good or bad, mm. it depends on how you spin it. That, that's yeah. to me, as long as you have a good crisis management team, there's no such thing as bad advertising. Yeah. But in a uh, uh, world, Sean, uh, it can yeah. be, can be, that one can be, can be a plot. It is, it's a real plan out. We all yeah, know. yeah, yes, yes, yes. It can be a plot. Yeah. 
I, I, there's a famous, uh, um, there was a famous incident, la, right, for this, uh, this particular chicken rice shop, <laughs> okay, la, it's, a, it's a restaurant, very, very famous, la, huh? so very heavy advertising. And then uh, I, I think it started by one blogger uh, to say, okay, wow, look at long queues to get in here. Is it really that good? Then say, okay, why don't we do this? We do a test. Uh, then he looks across the road and just opposite, there's say another ch old chicken rice shop there. And he, he says, oh, okay, why don't we try that and, and, and see how it goes, you know, versus this, this, this uh, heavily advertised one. So it, it caused a viral, you know, the, 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 mm. the blind test and stuff like that. And so unlead. The, the 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 chicken rice shop across the road uh, suddenly got the fame you know you see it's, it's accidental sometimes right you, you won't know what what will turn up okay uh, it's one of those things that uh, the new digital med media um, has created lah, huh? um, okay so anyway uh, there seems to be no more questions coming on and uh, before we close off, um, any words from you guys to summarize uh, what your message is and then the re reiterate that you have a, uh, an event on the 12th to the 13th of August. Is that right? So can you just repeat that properly so that uh, everyone else will know and what are the benefits and who should attend and uh, what they can get out of it? Okay. Um, we're actually going to be having the event at, uh, Wisma, uh, at Madrid, the exhibition center on the 12th and 13th of August. And uh, there's five different sessions a day, 10 a.m., 11.30, 2, 3.30, and 5 p.m. So you can pick a session, attend. The session will be very short. It's only about uh, 30 to 45 minutes. And then the rest of it is actually just pairing you up with the right uh, media platform for you to get going, you know, on your advertising journey. So what to expect is basically uh, media owners, like I mentioned during my presentation, have uh, slashed their prices up to 90%. So there'll be amazing packages uh, with the highest ROI you can, you can ever dream of and lowest entry level packages uh, as low as 35,000, which uh, qualifies you to get, uh, let's say 10,000 spots on a particular cinema uh, to advertise and uh, three insertions in a local English newspaper, for example, for 35,000 ringgit to get that amount of uh, advertising is actually unheard of. So you'll be expecting a lot of, uh, interesting packages uh, and the team will be there. Uh, Andrew, Andrew uh, will be guiding the SME, SMI or advertiser throughout the whole process from A to Z. It's, it's not like you come by media space and then we, we're you know, gonna let you go on your own. So there'll be coaching, personalized consultation throughout. Uh, there's a chance to win additional advertising packages. For example, if you purchase a particular cinema brand and their packages, they'll actually do a lucky draw so that you can win additional advertising packages. FOC uh, will be giving away um, uh, mobile phones, uh, tablets and stuff. And uh, microfinancing is also available because we understand that a lot of people need to hold on to their cash. So microfinancing will also be available. So I don't want to reveal too much. The event is on the 12th and 13th of August. Please come and check it out. Uh, Andrew, do you want to add on something? Yeah, uh, it's the first of its kind event uh, ever been held in our industry. So we are housing uh, everything under one roof to uh, let SME has a chance to advertise. Basically, uh, the big boys will usually uh, take this, but now we, this event is tailored for the SME to give them the opportunity to come bounce back. This is a good time to advertise. You know, as what you mentioned earlier, showcase your product services and what my colleague Niraj has mentioned earlier, best time to show to advertise no cluttered lowest entry rate you know uh and we're going to hand help you hand help the sme assist them you know do the right branding the design and everything you know and help them to execute the advertising campaign effectively so come to this event uh, uh free and talk to us and 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 you know find out what will be right for you hope to see you there right, Sean. right. okay thank you very much uh guys uh there again, I'm going to say, shout it out, be positive. I'm still alive. I'm kicking and let's start kicking. Okay. Right. right. Thank you very, very much. much. Uh, th thank uh, you, audience. Thank, thank you. Thank you, you. Thank you MICCI. Okay. All right. Uh, 
watch out, look, look into MICCI's uh, uh, Facebook and website. Uh, we usually hold webinars of interest like this to help the community. That's what we do. We are advocates for the business community um, to, to bring sharing and subject matter to our members to enrich your uh, business journey. Thank you very much. Good night and uh, see you next time. Goodbye. Bye.